Hello and welcome to this episode of Talk of the Turf. I'm Jimmy the Mower and today I'm joined by Bradley Tennant and Brian Sandals. Now, this might not sound as fresh as it should because it's the second time we've done it because Mr Brian Sandals didn't press record the first time. So without further ado, let's have a quick word with Brian. Who are you and what do you do apart from not pressing record? I'm the person that doesn't pr press record. Um, <laughs> I'm the, <laughs> the groundsman at Sussex Cricket at their academy ground. Um, it's quite a new site, so lots of new challenges, um, adapting to the, every, you know, everywhere you go, different different square miles, squares were three miles down the ground, down the road, but these are very different here. Um, in my spare time, I spend most of my time on Turf Care blog, which I'm the founder of. Um, yeah, so that's it. Most of you probably know me. Yeah. I'm sure we all do. And Bradley, <laughs> introduce yourself and what do you do? I'm Bradley Tennant. I am the uh, head of grounds at Crossfield School down in Reading in the UK. Um, and most of you will probably know me from International Greenkeepers Fire. Uh, we're the international hub for greenkeepers, ground staff and volunteers. And we do all this in a spare time. Uh, you can check us out at internationalgreenkeepers.com. So internationalgreenkeepers.com, that's interesting. And what do you do with that then? Do you, you is it find jobs for people a, abroad or around the world or at home or? Yeah, so we do a bit of everything. We we set out to be an organisation, not an association. Um, so we work with the associations, the biggers, yeah. uh, the GMAs, the the STMAs, uh, and try and unite everyone and bring everyone together in the industry, uh, bringing free education to those that can't get any, oh. uh, whether that be through educational cards, videos. Uh, and then we've got like bits of job boards and places where you can drop your CV. Just a bit of a hub, really, for pretty much anything you'd need. Um, you know, yeah, that sort of a thing. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. I'm delighted to have you with us today. Now, today's topic, we're going to talk about the industry that we work in and the pressures within the industry um, for the employees, the employed, the self-employed. As you all know, I'm a self-employed grounds maintenance contractor. That's what I do. We all work within the industry, golf courses, schools, cricket clubs. And we've got a friend, Scott, who recently left the industry. A lot of pressure within it and he left. He decided that it wasn't for him anymore. And unfortunately, he's left. And um, what do you think about that, Brian? Um, really sad and quite unexpected, really. Um, mm. Scott was really active with the blog. Um, always took a, a massive interest. He was just like, you know the sort of person that person that reads our blogs really and yeah. engages with us um always looking to learn always wanted you know there's always something he, he just had a thirst for learning for sharing um and connecting with other groundsmen yeah um, and, so, and he was he was a not he was a despite what was you know going on with himself and not feeling comfortable within the, within the industry he was very supportive of other people throughout the industry um through my patch of the day competition and other bits and pieces that I used to see him do and the people he used to talk to, you know, mm -hmm. he, he was great and a great advocate for the industry as well, working, you know, really well with everybody right up until the end. He, he had some big plans um, for um, like putting together a trade show with, with me and stuff like that. It was his passion. It wasn't really for me, but it was something I wanted to support him in. And it was something he, he was really, he really liked the, you know, the sound of and, yeah. you know sort of an educational day kind of thing um but yeah obviously you never know what's going on in the background we all we all struggle at times but we love the you know we do love our jobs on the good days but then sometimes the bad days just catch up on you and you just decide you know the growing stresses of the industry in the end is just, just too much yeah. you know for you to carry into yeah, that's it. yeah there's a lot of pressure isn't there put on uh, groundsmen and, and women throughout the mm. industry for basically everyone's a critic you know you you're putting it on there and it doesn't matter whether it's a, a Sunday league football team or you're managing a, a school grounds or top class golf course you you just you are you're trying to do the best that you can do at all times with the equipment and, and the materials that are available to you and within the budget now, a lot of people expect to turn up to go and kick a ball around on a, on a Saturday or Sunday or go and play cricket and expect the ground to be looking like Lords or Wembley or turn up near Augusta. And unfortunately, although we're doing our best, we're working with a tiny fraction of a per, tiny fraction of a percentage, not even a percentage, a fraction of a percentage of their budgets 
and it puts us under enormous pressure. I mean, what do you think about that? Yeah, as we spoke about before, which unfortunately you'll not, a lot of you will never get to see, um, <laughs> there's, a, there's a big stigma uh, on the industry um, of it, things being perfect, so, you know, and expecting that, that cricket wicket that gets prepared by the council to be bang on on a Sunday morning, bearing in mind that no one's been there since Friday. <laughs> yeah. um, the, you know, it might not even have covers on it, these sort of things. Um, but they expect to be there, you know, well, the players, we've, we've paid our subs, um, that sort of a thing. And, you know, and, they, and then they're turning up and saying, well, what's gone on? Why isn't someone here working on a Sunday morning in the rain, um, yeah. making sure these covers are on? Um, but then the quality of it as well, we, we've spoke about, you know, the people picking up on the TV of um, like the football clubs. You, you, you've got a bit of banding, a line's a bit off, uh, so some of your stripes are off, your bays yeah. are different sizes. Um, but these are the things that people pick up. Everyone's a critic, you know. Everyone's yeah. a critic, and I think a lot of people at home they've got a, a small patch of grass or lawn front or back, and and they're looking at that, and they've they've been out and they've cut theirs, and they can do on it, and they can box it off once a week, and if it's you know warm and wet, and they can go and cut it three times a week if they want, and they're never going to have any real problems, and they they look at something on the TV, and they might have had four games in the last five five days or six yeah. days, and it's not, it's not even as good as my back lawn, what's going on. <laughs> a, a great example of that's Wembley, you know, Carl does a fantastic job. Um, yeah. But you come to FA Cup final season, you know, at the end of the year, <laughs> May, and I, I know full well that he's, he's got like 10 games in a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, and then people will hound it on final day and say, yeah. what's happened? And, and, they, and, yeah. and they will, they, they really now, will. The thing is, we, we know what's happened, um, but they don't understand that, you know, that everything that's gone on and you're looking at five, six days to repair a pitch after a game to get it back to how it was where we, when you're divoting and mowing and brushing. It's a lot of work. Yeah. Um, but obviously the, the average Joe never really sees this. But unfortunately, oh. there, is, there is a bit of this stigma inside of the industry as well um, because of sites are so specific. Like a lot of people, maybe you work in cricket, you work in rugby, you wouldn't understand um, maybe working inside of a stadium in football, yeah, yeah. Uh, having, you know, wind, shade, that sort of a thing where you, maybe you work out in a council field and that's all you've got as one field. Uh, yeah. Or you've got to look at a whole training complex. You don't understand how things change. Um, it's not just cutting grass, there's a lot more to it. Yeah, yeah, that's it. Not just cutting grass. Well, there you go. See, I've got, I'm probably out of us here. I've got the easiest job, you know, with people are walking up and down. I've cut general amenity ground, Sunday football league pitches. They want to walk past those pitches. They want to see them nice and green and striped up and that's it. I can run up and down on the Ransoms Parkway, put some stripes down on there. It looks fantastic. Don't get up too close though, because uh, if any turf care professional came out of the look, I'd be getting it in the neck really. They're... Um, they're, they're not great. They're not great. They're, they're pleasing on the eye, but they aren't great. But there's, again, that's down to sort of a lack of understanding. And I'm working for the customers that I need their approval. And their approval is the nice, the stripes. I'm doing the best that I can with the limited budget and the facilities that they've got. This is a dog walking field, a kids play area, whatever it is, with a football pitch drawn on it. We do our best to, to give, give them the best pitch that we can. And I'm sure... Everybody out there does within this industry. Not only do we do this within our paid hours, but we go above and beyond. And there's a lot of people who work extra, sort of put extra time and effort in, um, sometimes to the detriment of their family life and personal life, you know, as, as we know with, with personal, with people on a personal basis. I'm sure we all know people who, who've struggled with this sort of stuff. But um, that then brings me on to sort of volunteers within the industry. We're paid within the industry. Not very well all the time, but we have a lot of volunteers. Now, what do we think about volunteers within the industry? Where, where do they lie? Um, with, it's a little bit unfortunate with volunteers because they sort of, they almost have to do it for the love or um, really enjoy the sport. Uh, because that money that we spoke about doesn't make its way down to the, like the lower leagues and the football and the cricket and the rugby um, and even stuff like hockey and bits like that, you know, they, they, they still need areas to play on, whether it's yeah. an artificial pitch, there's still in, typically going to be a groundsman about. Mm -hmm. um, but these these facilities still need maintaining. And and like I say, usually it's it, the volunteers are having to do that to keep the costs down. 
Yeah. Uh, but then then they're not getting the training or the 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 knowledge and the experience that they need to um to look after that place they you know you could go to a, a club and they could have all the kit but they've got this yeah. volunteer looking after the place and he, he was he was the only one that said yes everyone else said, i don't want to work on it yeah, yeah. morning for free cutting the pitch before we play in the cold mm. um and he, he's mm. got to use this kit that he has no idea with yeah. you know to to produce a pitch L limited yeah. limited knowledge for him yeah. to produce you know a, a pitch that somebody could you know a, a lifetime's worth of experience and have trouble trouble sorting out really and he sort of turns up and limited knowledge and a, and a few you know we've all we've all chipped in for a bit of petrol for the mower get on with it and there you go that's it now i think a, the way forward through this is obviously through education and and brian you're sort of trying to set up a scheme aren't you where you going to bring the, the, the younger generation in there to see what you're doing and hopefully they'll be able to educate the older generation really yeah um i've been approached by a local club that um, want to send their young players to come and sort of work with me um sort of just occasional just to occasionally just 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 to see what actually is involved in 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 our job yeah um just because obviously that you know they, they rely on volunteers and and they need more help from their younger people and the next generation coming through so mm -hmm. that the hope is that they will come here they will take an interest they will they get a bit of a bug for it because you know it yeah. it often does if you know we have a we have a passion for what we do that often does rub yeah. off on people yeah, yeah. and they go away you know much with with a lot more interest you know they know what they're playing on they know what goes into it they know it's not just done the night before in the, you know and then cut grass mark the white line they 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 get to learn a bit more about really what what they're playing on and they think that's a little advantage as well and they're, they're probably yeah, going to yeah. go on and tell others and you know it's 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 all good stuff so yeah um, that's something that's up and coming and it's looking it looks quite promising really yeah yeah it sounds fantastic or fantastic scheme really you know get get them educated from a young age and they'll go and, like you say, they'll go and tell other people. And that's how it sort of starts to snowball. And like you say, we have a passion for the industry. And I think our passion rubs off on other people when they come and see it. And you can explain to them, that you know, what we're doing and why we do it. And mm. they sort of get a, an interest in it. And it's like you say, it snowballs. It's really a bit of a bug, isn't it, when you start? I mean, you know, I fell into this, you know, not by accident, but not really by design either. And you just sort of get swept up and you think all oh, right now i can do this and do this and 10 years ago we didn't really have this community that we have now with the social media and i was sort of out there on my own and i didn't really understand what it all was and, and how it all worked and my goodness now if i was coming into this industry now 10 years on or 12 years on almost you, you look at it and you think there's a wealth of support and and also, I know we have a lot of, you know, there's the naysayers in every industry and in every walk of life, but this industry, we have a lot of supportive people, don't we, throughout, you know, the, the, all the different sort of genres that we do. There's a lot of supportive people and, and there's always people there to help others and, and to answer questions. And Scott was one of those people, wasn't he? And unfortunately, he, he thought that it wasn't really for him. Um, and a lot of this we're looking down at unsociable hours maybe i mean i run my own business it's up to me when i go to work however like everybody we're dictated to by the weather that's it you know so I think you're employed and i presume of, uh, you still have to go don't you brad yeah the the lack of recognition as well you know you, you especially at the moment i look at the jobs advertised and, and the, yeah. the main one for me which is really frustrating something needs to be done about this soon uh, is assistant greenkeepers and I've seen so, so many jobs where it's been, right, you're assistant greenkeeper, but you need your level three, your PA2, PA6, PA1, yeah. chainsaw. Um, yeah. You need to know how to set up a course on your own, work weekends on your own. And you go, hang on, you know, you, you put on this advert 18,000 to 20,000 a year for a yeah. deputy head, which you're labeling as an assistant greenkeeper or, you know, it's, and it's mm. like, is this really an attractive prospect for someone? It, it, you know, it does it makes me feel sorry for the people that are feeling like they need to apply for these jobs because yeah. um, what, what really is attractive about that? You know, you, you're doing a lot of work for not even a title, um, yeah. never mind the money. And you can look at the other um, in instances or even look at the, the recommendations on bigger and GMA for the, the salaries and stuff like that. And it, 
obviously I know it's not all about the money. We don't become groundsmen no. to be millionaires. Um, but we'd like, we'd, like a, we'd like a fair wage and a crack yeah, of it. We, we, and, like and you, you, and you're working on sociable hours. You're working on sociable days. You know, you, you're in summer sports and you, your summer holidays are limited uh, to what you can do, you know, and, and holidays at other times are limited and often dictated to by the weather, you know. So you, you're looking at salaries and you're saying there that Bigger and GMA, they have salary bands in there, do they? Yeah, they, they put out the recommendations, but it's not really pushed by anyone. Um, it could do with really being picked up by sort of Sports England or something like that to say, hang on, you know, we look after the physios, we look after the coaches, we look after the players. Like, surely the people that look after the pitches are then part of the sport. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, we don't quite fall under that bubble. We seem to be under these other ones, which don't seem to be recognised, even by the government, really. You know, yeah. you look at the apprenticeship schemes um, with the trailblazer at the moment, the the struggle to get the, the, a separation between greenkeeping and like gardening. Like yeah. they look at it and go, no, it's the same thing. Sign it off. Yeah. Bye again. Um, yeah. And it's a really frustrating stigma. And it just leads back yeah. to the other points that we've do, been talking about. you know about. what? That, that's an interesting point that you brought up there, the greenkeeping and the gardening. Because I'm a contractor basically grass cutting contractor groundskeeping contractor whatever you want to call it we go around as you say pa1 pa2 pa6 and whatever else comes with it chainsaw tickets mower tickets trimmer tickets everything that goes with it and we do it and when we're looking for public liability insurance or whatever we're doing or filling in forms for insurance purposes trucks and trailers and whatever else we've got and we put down groundsmen and it comes under landscaping or gardening yeah uh, and you think well you know surely we've got to have some definition somewhere of who we are and what we do yeah especially when you go through them checklists and you and you see all of the other industry yeah. and, and some of them you'll you know you'll like there'll be laundrettes and stuff yeah and yeah abattoirs slaughter yeah. and laundrettes you read them all don't you why, why isn't the groundsman on there you know it's a really defined job um yeah, it is, it but, is. but yeah you know we're, we're classed as landscapers. I've never laid a slab in my life. That's yeah, exactly. Different. That's the other thing. I put some dirt think. down, and then that was probably about as much landscaping as it'll be. Yeah, now, that's you, it. know, you speak to a landscaper and you say, "Oh, I've done some turfing." No laugh at you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Throwing a bag of seed around. That's about as much as I've done. Yeah, um, yeah, but. So, yeah, the, the, the wage is suppressed then, really, salary-wise. I, I, th I think they are. Um, I know it's different for me being a contractor. We seem to be in a race to the bottom at the moment, and I'm, I'm sort of losing a bit of, uh, bit of faith in the system. I'm not trying to join in with that race to the bottom. I'm trying to cut my own sort of cloth and, and forge my own way through and find my niche in the market there for uh, people who want something a little bit different. But... Um, uh, how, how can we lift the, the, the general sort of wage up, do you think? I think part of it is actually down to the massive gap. Uh, and this is no disrespect to the people that have made it to the top of the game. You know, they've obviously done a fantastic job to get to where they are. Um, but if you look at, say, a head groundsman at one place, one football club, um, I don't know, I won't say any names because oh, I don't get no. in trouble. If we look at a Premier League football club and then we look at a League Two football club, essentially they're, they're doing pretty much the same job. They might have a little bit less of a budget, but they're expected to prepare for televised games. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and the same amount of games, if not more, in a lower league. Yeah. Um, but are paid a substantial amount less. Yeah. And, and you know, and it, it's, it's that sort of gap. It's like, yes, I get it. Obviously, working at the more prestigious places, say if you're yeah, in, yeah. in any other sport, if you were. Uh, working on a race course and you worked at Ascot versus, I don't know, the local race course, obviously, there's going to be yeah. a gap. Um, yeah. the, the, there's always a gap, but you've got to try and manage that. We, we need um, to, to, to raise the minimum, really. We need to raise the minimum. That's what we're looking at. We, we're not, whatever they get paid at the top, they get paid at the top. That's for, yeah. for them to, to sort out. But we need to raise the, the profile of these people lower down, you know, where the football takes place and like, like say, League Two, League, League One, even Championship. You're coming from League One to Championship. It's a big step up there. And, and you, you've got to up your game, haven't you? You're, you're, you're more televised matches really on, you know, going to be on Sky or Pay-Per-View or whatever they are. And, and they're going to be out there and you've got to up your game. And as I say, the budget isn't there. 
but are they really investing in the groundsman? You know, well, this is it. You know, they say the budget isn't there, but when even a championship team's turning over millions of pounds a year yeah. to playing 25 players, 20, 30 grand a year in the championship alone, yeah. um, but they're paying the, the ad groundsman 20 grand or 25 yeah, yeah. grand, you know, it's and then they're the first ones to take the wage cut as well. You look at the pandemic now, yeah, uh, and the amount of people that got laid off last. March it was, yeah. um, uh, like you know, you look at um, Arsenal with the the cutting the salary on the staff, uh, but the players still getting the wages. And they they, they furloughed, they, they got rid of the tea lady, didn't they? Yeah. Oh, it's not famous, the it's mascot. <laughs> yeah, mascot, mascot went going around on went. players on millions of pounds, groundsmen mm. scraping a living together, and they get rid of the tea lady. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And this is, um, but the, the, there's no protection. There's no, uh, like I said, this is where I feel like someone needs to step in. Um, who it is, obviously, we're trying to build something, but at the moment, yeah. we're not in a situation to uh, sort of get into that. But yeah, it really does need someone to grab it and say, you know, these people need to be looked after. You look at teachers and other things. They've all got unions. They've all got groups that can yeah, go to protection. Yeah. The groundsman, you, you, you're just out on your own at the moment. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, I'm not, um, you know, a part of that sort of crowd or, or whatever you're with, but I'll, I'll definitely stand by you and I'll do everything I can to support you in that because I think it's a really important thing to do um, for the good of the industry, really. We need to drag everybody up from the bottom. There, there needs to be... It, it's the unsociable hours that, are, that, I, that, that throws me. Any other job with these unsociable hours would be... Um, it'd just be unacceptable you know you, you're there some of these people they're cleaning up after a night match the, the way they shift the times around now on on tv yeah, they, I've been there. yeah exactly well you've been there the, the what, morning, what time they, the you know it's what sorry i've been there at one in the morning brushing the pitch yeah. so yeah no exactly there you go what one in the morning and then you know you've got to be in the next day to walk again yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly you know and that and that's not on is it that's not on it, it, it's not <laughs> Mm. It's what, sorry? It's gruelling. It really it is, does. It is gruelling. Yeah. It is gruelling. I mean, we signed up to like the 48 hour working like time directive and there should be 12 hours between shifts. And Yeah, and, and you think everything. like with football, you say you've got two home, two home games on the bounce or even over Christmas is the worst one um, yeah. because of the, the New Year's. You get a Wednesday home game and a Saturday home game. So that means you obviously you're working your nads off all Monday, Tuesday to get this pitch prepared. Wednesday, you're in at seven in the morning. The game starts at half eight at night. Uh, you get home for 12 midnight. You're back in at seven on Thursday, divoting all day, divoting all day Friday and mowing, prepping for Saturday. Then Saturday, you're in at seven again in the morning. And then say it's a late game again, say it's five, maybe seven o'clock. You're in until sort of 10, 11 o'clock again. I've lost two days of my week, literally the whole of the days, like even going home and showering, yeah, uh, yeah. eating food at home, you're like gone. And then gone, Sunday, yeah. what you want to do is lie in bed and, you know, your partners, yeah. and you, maybe your kids, and all, you know, like, come on, are you doing something today? You've, you... yeah. yeah. There's a lot, there's a lot of stresses and strains, isn't there, on the, on the, on the family, you know, we've gone through like, not only the, the expectations of producing first class you know services to play on with a very limited budget but we've got the anti-social aspects of it being out of all hours the, the suppressed sort of salaries sometimes as well but within the industry we have got some positives going for us we've got a we've got a good community that, that we us three here are a part of and have helped build really and we, we've, we've we've sort of pushed it and and strive to, to to support each other especially when things maybe aren't going so well we, you know Brian I'm, you're always on there you've got people coming in to do blogs and you let them get things off their chest and the support that comes in for those people is phenomenal really isn't it mm. yeah um, I mean I find it really really therapeutic to write um, yeah. and I think you know he, for, say for Scott it really helped him and we've also yeah. got another blog coming up um, and people actually message me and they say, you know, um, you know, that I've got a drink problem, whatever. And, and it, I want to, you know, I'm a groundsman and stuff like that. And I want to get it off my chest and I want to write about it, you know, and say yeah. you can be anonymous or you can put your own name or whatever. And they yeah. just, that people actually want to write and it, it, it's really good for them. And, and as 
the last blog, the blog we did with Scott, nearly 3,000 views on it. I mean, yeah. that is like three times more than we'd normally get. So that shows you that it really did touch a nerve. Yeah. Um, it was an emotional piece, though. He mm. wrote that from the heart, you know. He, he was, he, yeah. he's one of the good guys. And mm. he'd just come to the point where he'd had enough. He felt, you know, it was lack of support, financial um, constraints, family life, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and it all comes through. And there's just got to be a point where he just, you just think, enough is enough. I, I can't, you know. There's, there's got to be something else out there, and it's tough. But we do pick people up as well when they're low, don't we? And we do keep a lot of people in the industry within ourselves, and we we praise each other. I know there's always people within the industry who like mm. to have a snipe and a gripe at other people for what they do or what they're perceived to do or not do but we try and as a whole we're a, a good community and we, we sort of try and help each other out I mean the amount of times I see on Twitter's my main platform and we see on there that people have had problems with machinery or staff or whatever and within hours there are people there within hours people mm -hmm. turning up you know volunteers professionals people with machinery it's just done it's yeah. fantastic fantastic you people are, um Obviously, they don't get to see how much people really do help each other. Um, even like me, with uh, I went out to Oz, uh, and that was just literally through sending a message to a friend, yeah, um, Daryl. And then you know, I, I know the guys up at Forest. I could just go and give them a message and say, "Hey, can I turn up for watch a game?" Or obviously not at the moment. Yeah, uh, yeah. And I'd go and do a bit of diverting with them and get to watch the game for free, or. Yeah. Uh, that sort of a thing and that that community uh, really does mean a lot when you're inside of it um, and even with like the bits that Brian's doing like you said uh, he might post a blog or post a picture and say oh my, my wicket's looking good today and someone will go oh how do I get my wicket looking yeah, like that well, I've, you know mine's a little bit off what, what's wrong with it and the community really does come together and yeah. Um, like I say, within a few hours, you can have all sorts on it. So, you all know. sorts. Of, and it's not just that, is it? It's that it's the people start to understand that within the industry, whereas a lot of people, or some of the, some of the people are quite secretive, shall we say, and they don't like to give any, or oh, we'll keep this and won't give, it any, give mm. anything away. And then you talk to other people, like Brian, and he's very mm. open, and he will show people what he's doing and explain why he's doing it and, and what it's for and what he will hope to achieve. Mm. And I think by doing that and being honest and upfront with people, you gain a lot of respect from, from other people within the industry. And also you help so many people with their own knowledge. You know, they come through, I watch you, you know, I'm, I know nothing about cricket, wicket squares, and I'll mow the occasional outfield here and there. What goes on within those ropes is nothing to do with me. That's it. You keep your mower off here, son, and that'll do. That's all I ever get told. But <laughs> I watch yours, and it's enlightening, you know. It's a whole different world. It's a whole different... And for you to take the time to, to show other people, I think that's a, amazing, really, Brian. It really is. You do get... I've had people before, um, maybe peers, and they've told me to stop, sh you know, why are you sharing everything? Don't yeah. give... Don't give people too much. Give them little bits. Always remain sort of, you know, the upper hand and stuff. And but to me, you know, you give out, you get back as well. Because yeah, you know, I, I've only got to place where I am with my, where my current knowledge is. I'm not saying this is better than anyone else, but where where mine is, it's through other people. You know, it's yeah. what other people have told me, uh, my old bosses and stuff. And that we we're all learning. I see it as we're all learning together. We're all moving forward. You we're know, all, we're different all stages there. of the ladder. Yeah, we I, are. I don't think there's anyone at the top of that ladder who's looking down on us. I think we're all moving up that ladder. My yeah. old boss, you know, high respect, he's moving up the ladder. We are all moving up that ladder yeah. together and we're all learning off each other. There's, there's, I, there's, I there's nothing there's to hide, a, you know. I don't think there's a single person that's ever in this industry that can turn around and say, you know what, I know it all now, that will do for me. Yeah. You don't, I think... Uh, and going back to the volunteers again, we have people who retire from the industry after years within the industry and within a few months they're back as volunteers because they can't stay away and they are still learning after years yeah. within the industry. They yeah. come back as a volunteer and they're still learning and picking things up. Well, it's an ever-evolving industry, um, yeah. even with the, the site-specific things. Like we, we said, you can do one thing here and down the road, it can be completely different. Yeah. When you think of the technologies that are coming along, the lighting rigs, 
um, the um, synthetic, you know, like the synthetic stitch in the sizes, the um, yeah. these sort of things, uh, you know, the better quality mowers, uh, green mowers, uh, and then just different techniques people are picking up, you know, which is, we've had a lot of here where it's been, oh, we've done it this way for 20 years, so why would we change it? But I've <laughs> gone, hang on a minute, you've been marking this pitch out with like, you know, going off references in the corners. I've just gone, why don't we just measure it and three, four, five it? And they'll go, oh, well, no one ever showed us that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's just little basic things like that, though, and they, they, they really do go a long way. Mm. Yeah, they do. They do. And I always say about the, the information, you're giving this information away. The people who are at your level and standard, they need this information and they need to be doing this across whatever industry they're in to try and get everybody up to the same level and the people who are below you in the lower leagues they might not have the budget or the equipment to do what you're doing and then they need to look at what you're doing and adapt what they're doing to try and you know emulate what you're doing on a lower budget with you know not quite all the machinery that you've got that's how it works and and they need to look at you and they're striving towards it and you're helping not only the people around you but the people below you and the people above are looking down and thinking, oh, right, and you're looking up to them and, and bringing yourself up. And it, it really does, it really does make a, a huge, huge difference to, with this information out there. The, the information is out there anyway. People can search it, they can look at it, you know. It's not if they, quite the they same spend time. One, though, is it? You know, you imagine, no. you know, say Tom from his local football club has just yeah. been told he, can, he, he volunteers, but he's, he's just been given five grand by the government to go and buy a mower. You yeah. know, where's, where's the first place he goes? He can go get ripped off by the local dealership yeah. or he can go to, you know, online on a marketplace or on a, uh, mm. a group like Brian's uh, yeah. and say, you know, what, what can I get? This is what I've got. What, what would be suitable? Would what, I need a what can I get? Yeah. Uh, uh, rotary. Um, what, and what also can I get for the money? Yeah. And th this sort of information could go stop someone buying a, a dud or, you know. Yeah, it does. Uh, it does. Oh, I've seen, I've seen that, Brad, you're exactly right. I've seen that many times and people come on and say, look, this is the only bit of ground that we've got. We've been offered £3,000. How do we use this £3,000? What is the best way to use it? You know, shall we buy a mower? Do we get a contract to do we do this, do that, do the other? And the people will come through and not only just, you know, a couple of one-liners, people will sit there and cost it out and they will cost stuff out for people and they'll put it, link it all the way down and you look at it and you think, wow they've really took some time to go into it and answer that question and and we get it on twitter you know with the same sort of people go hey jimmy you know this is my patch of lawn out the back it's terrible it looks like this looks like that what can i do and then you'll get some groundsmen come on from like wimbledon and say <laughs> oh you know what the best and i'm like what Who the <laughs> where have they sprung up from what i would do is actually this 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 and this and you think wow that's that is like phenomenal, really. That's amazing. You know, it really is something else. And just somebody just popped on from somewhere or, a you know, a groundsman like from a football club from the championship will pop on and say something and they just give that information away. And it's really fascinating and interesting to everybody involved. And I think that's one of the great things about the community. I know there's a, there's a lot put on the, the negative side of it. You know, we're, we're under pressure a lot. And talking of being under pressure, um, at this time of the year, people have expectations of pitches now. We're in May, aren't we? We've had rain, sleet, snow, hail, everything. Oh. <laughs> yeah, everything you want, we've had it all. Um, how's that affecting the turf at the moment with sort of, you know, water resistance, disease, etc.? Are you, you having problems, Brian? Um, we've just had... I, April, just the grass didn't grow. The, the average people going about how dry it was but we've had a, quite a few dry years aprils um they yeah. say it's the temperature this year was a problem it was really low it in was the ground right. and at the end of the day if the, the plant isn't you're going to fill in the new seeds are not going to come through it's just going to sit really you know but barely cut it you know you yeah. could on other years we've been cutting it three times a week at this time of year you could cut it once every two weeks at the moment so it's not yeah. filling in it's looking bare it's looking patch you know it's looking patchy it's not taking in fertilizers and i've heard a lot of people a lot of groundsmen getting stick for that you know because yeah. things things you know and and them those above them just you know just 
why is this looking like this? What can, why can't you do something about it? Why is it, in it, it you know, it looks, so that, you know, that, that's been a major challenge last month. I think we're on, on the change of that now a bit. Yeah, the temperature's yeah. dropped a bit, but we haven't got the frosts. Um, no. Things are moving a little bit more. And, yeah. and we've got some moisture around to get some fertilizers on. So, yeah. I could see Bud like nodding away there. Well, you you obviously experiencing the same sort of problems. Pretty much in exactly the same boat. Yeah, we've had uh, people come out and question, say, "Oh, the pitch looks a bit, you know, and I'm, you know, a bit yellow, a bit bare." And I'll say, mm -hmm. "Well, we had the whole of April where it didn't rain. Uh, yeah. The ground temperatures have been really low, uh, and the grass just isn't moving." Uh, I've got you know bags and bags of fertilizer and seed at the moment. I've, well, my seed arrived today, thankfully, at good timing. Yeah. Um, ready to get out but i've just the past few weeks you know you're sort of looking at it and going is it really worth doing anything at the moment because it's not not going to go anywhere i can't get the um the disc to the cedar into the ground because it's rock hard and it's april <laughs> um and it's you know it's not even frosty it's it's absolutely ridiculous um mm -hmm. but it's these sort of challenges that we face and then obviously like i say people pick on it up on it and you know well, the grass looks a bit yellow and don't realize the fact you know everything that's gone on behind the scenes and you you're doing the best you can really yeah and you know they're not they're, they're better than you know in the autumn you get you, you get um a small growth window from your renovations in cricket and then but you you rely really on your, on your spring one to really thicken things and push things through and recover and recover and we just haven't had we haven't had that today so and there's there's so you know there's we, we're not magicians we haven't got magic wands no. you know you can you, you, it doesn't matter how much money you've got and what mm. machinery you've got we're all sort of held i mean you can the things you are. can do to aid you know you can put germination sheets down and things like that but even that's not really worked it has in the last week but before that it, even that wasn't really working nothing oh. was really working we're putting down seed chucking money down the chucking money down the you know pigeon it food. just was a waste of time really so yeah. pigeon food yeah there's a lot of fat pigeons around here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all of your grass seed yeah, that's the thing though. It's, but every season, see, though, you know, we're talking about the stresses and strains of being a, a groundsman and the pressures it puts on us. Mm. And one of the biggest things that we cannot control is the weather. That is it. Mm. And, and we are at the mercy. And as you say, we've had the driest April for, you know, a good while. And it's not just the fact that it's been dry, it's been cold. It's cold. Uh, you know, I blame Mrs. Moa for that because she's ordered some new garden furniture. So it's going to be the worst summer on record now, without a <laughs> shadow of a doubt. So you know, you know who to blame for this one. But yeah, it, it's been cold, hasn't it? It's been, uh, and now we're moving into wet and cold, really. Uh, mm. And you'd expect a little rise in temperature with a with a with a sort of rain coming in. It stopped the frost, doesn't it? We've, the overnight temperatures lifted a little bit. But the daytime temperatures, I mean, up here in Shropshire, we're sort of eight and nine degrees at the beginning of May, you know, daytime temperature. That is not where we need to be. That's March. March yeah, yeah, like the past few years, you know, you last April it was okay. And then the summer came along and we had sort of eight weeks of absolutely nothing but baking sun. Yeah. And everywhere was brown. And then August came along and it just went, right, you've got you've got a month of rain. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it did. September, the grass, you can't keep up with it, like Brian says. No. Sometimes you're cutting it three times a week. Yeah, yeah. Or you were it's extremes, it. isn't it? That's what yeah. we're dealing with now. Yeah. We're dealing with extremes, extreme winters, yeah. extreme, you know, with the wet, how wet the winters are. Yeah. You know, it's either too wet or too dry. The, the, the winter the, wasn't particularly cold, was it? But it just seemed uh, to be long and wet. wet. It started to mm. rain sort of, like you said, when did it start raining? In August. And we probably had a bit of a break in September and then it started raining again and it never really stopped until um, beginning of well, mid-March and then it's not rained since until yeah. like the last couple of days and mm. you're up against it again. And it, For you lot, you're there and you're on site and you can do stuff. As a contractor like me, I have to try and arrange my cuts and jig my cuts around to, to fit in. If all of a sudden now it, we start having daytime temperatures of 25 degrees, and some rain overnight as well my goodness i'm going to be up against it you know i'm just going we're just round 14 hour days seven days a week just keep going around and cutting and cutting and cutting until we get a bit of a break you know crossing our fingers open for three dry weeks and it'll just start to brown off whereas you lot are all out there with your irrigation system 
Yeah, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You got yeah. plenty of you, you know irrigation then on the school on the uh we, we only have um piped irrigation so we can only you know put the pop-ups out we don't have any yeah. actual um in, irrigation in the fields which is a bit frustrating and it's no. just sort of one of the things you have to work with and adapt with especially coming from a background where literally every single place i've worked has had some sort of irrigation um to come in here and it's been absolutely zilched and i've had to go out and buy hose pipes and sprinklers yeah uh, so it's like you know these are just Parts of the challenges of the job, but things you learn, um, you know, again, off social media, you know, I, I know I can go onto Brian's page and I can uh, go on the search bar and put in uh, ir irrigation sprinklers, same yeah. as on our international greenkeepers. Uh, and something will come up, someone will have been saying about it, or even on YouTube, like for yourself, Jim, yeah. um, you know, it could be something else like that, maybe how to sharpen a mower, and you, you know, you can pick these things up, and yeah. it's just part and parcel of the job, yeah. really. Again, we're going back to there, like the education within the, the industry, aren't we? And, you know, we're sort of, we have an education within the industry and there are education structures, but we're the kind of people that sort of educate ourselves and we learn from one another and, and put that through, which is a, another great sign of the community that, that we're in. Well, this is um, it. Even, um, people people shy away from it because they like volunteering at a big club. Like you can go to Wembley with Carl and you can volunteer yeah. on match days. Same with most big clubs: Tottenham, Arsenal, Fort, uh, Man United. Yeah. Uh, Wimbledon is another big one, uh, and the golf events. And just to be around that environment and you know that, that one week of asking questions could really be the difference between you know you walking into your next job and having a, a bit of an idea or walking into your next job and not really knowing what yeah um to do with the machinery you got maybe or like the irrigation and things like yeah. that uh, and i can vouch because i've been down to wembley myself there and met carl on the team and uh, you you're not going to get a more welcoming environment than that ever or he was you know one of one of the great don't tell my wife but it was one of the greatest days of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I really enjoyed it. Whoever cuts grass, who's never dreamt of like mowing Wembley or you know Lords or yeah. Wimbledon, wherever you go, you know yeah. that's 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 your dream, isn't it? That's it. And I, I went and did it. It was only a couple of strikes. So I went and did it, and, and <laughs> like it's right work. up there. And it's not just for me. I saw when we were there and they were talking about volunteers because they were coming up to the um, FA bars and whatever was going on, and they they were chatting and they got people in and team meetings and you could see how it was working and how these people were coming from different clubs and they weren't professional clubs so they you know from groundsmen from all over the country from all sort of from all sort of standards and all tiers of the football league and they're all there and they're all treated equally and they've all got a job to do and they play a part in it and it's a fantastic experience really fantastic experience so I could see that from where he's and I promised Carl, well Carl said that I could go back down and I promised him that I will go back down and I'll, I'll Go and spend a, a day there on one of the match days and see how it all works. So, really looking forward to that when things get back to normal. So, we've gone through all the sort of constraints. Is there anything you'd like to add there, Brian? You know, we, we work in this industry on sociable hours with poor pay. <laughs> we're not really <laughs> tough, tough conditions. We've got everybody's a critic. You know, we're not really selling it to the people, are we? Uh, as, a, as a sort of industry to move into. It, it's you, you've got to try and it's hard it is hard um, especially if you like for me cricket season you know it's tight you just got to try and accept that you're going to have your good days your bad days and your really ugly days and you, you're going to have them and but then you know enjoy them good days you know and try and be kind to yourself um, yeah. you know and not set the bar too you know we all strive too much and we all compare too much to what we see down the road yeah. of, a, of a ground maybe with you know double the budget more staff or whatever and we just want that all the time and we're just striving all the time putting ourselves under a lot more pressure than we, we we need you know it's good to strive it's good to, to always push on and try to improve things but it, it can get to a point where it can be unhealthy as well um yeah. so yeah that that and, and i'm like you know i'm always striving and i'm never happy with the outfield and that but you know you need to find some balance and sort of say my best is good enough, you know. Yeah, you yeah. Know? I see. You know, and sometimes it's going to look crap. It's going to look a bit yellowy and stuff, and that's it. You know, you you know, hand on heart, that you've mm. done within the constraints that are, are placed on you, machinery, 
weather conditions, time, mm. budget. You have done your best. Yeah. And you've produced the pitch to the standard, the best standard that you can get it for, mm. for that game. That's it. You know that. And I think we do this because we we love it. I think that's what mm. it is. We just love, we love what we do and we love, we have a passion for it and we love it and we love to help people out and show them what we can do and show them how they can achieve it. I think that's why we we really yeah. do it. And I think that comes out in, in the community sort of spirit, but we just need some better recognition from outside, I think. I think that's the, the gist of it. You know? I think seeing the end product is obviously a big thing as well, especially football and cricket. Um, there's something yeah. really satisfying about rolling the cricket wicket just before the game, um, you know, just that final finishing touch and you're sort of, you're sitting in the sun, you've got your, you know, you've got your earmuffs on and everything and you're nice and relaxed knowing that this is the final bit and then I'm out of the way and they're playing. Yeah. Um, but to see that, you know, looking like maybe not quite as good as the ones you see on the TV, but knowing that you've, like Brian says, you've done your best and, yeah. you know, that's a pretty good wicket, you know, always a, uh, the, the grass is all cut nice and neat and it's looking good. Um, and then the players, you know, sometimes you may get the players coming out as well, not just criticising, but going, you know, the, the wicket looks good, you know, it's nice and firm, it's, it's been playing well. And, you know, it's these sort of things. They, they really do help and go a long way. Yeah, they do. Just, just, we, just, we just all have to, we, we'd all like a bit more money, <laughs> a, bit, a, bit, a bit more time off. But more, more than that, we'd like the recognition of the, the general public, I think, and some understanding from the general public and, and just... They can see that you're not sitting around, you know, hiding from the rain or whatever you're doing. You're out there and, and you're putting your all in. And it looks like that because of things beyond your control, circumstances beyond your control. That's, think, that's why it looks like that, because they know hand on heart that you would be out there and doing that to the best of your ability with the best equipment that you've got. Exactly. I think. Yeah, and we, we, you know, we're not expecting people to shove a trumpet up his backside and sort <laughs> of, uh, you know, we, we, we're quite happy to sing his own praises and yeah, sit yeah. in the corner and know that we've, we've, like you said, we've done a good job. So um, it's just finding that balance, you know, it, you, you all, yeah, you don't want to be too much in the limelight. As they always say, you know, a, gra a groundsman in the limelight is usually a uh, groundsman that's done something wrong. You don't ever see, <laughs> oh, the pit, pitch looks amazing at Man United. You'll see, oh, uh, groundsman yeah, yeah. had a fallout with one of the players on the pitch at half time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. It's true. It's true. Mm. That's how it is, isn't it? Unsung heroes, you know. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing, isn't it? You know, you, you've got these these players, international players, David Beckett, these, these massive superstar players, Messi, whatever. And you know you, they're playing on on our on our, on our grass, and yeah. well, you know, it's this, it's the whole the grass makes it, doesn't it? You know, and, yeah, and people does. really take it for granted and and undervalue the, the importance of that pitch being there. I mean, these guys can play in anything, but yeah, you yeah. know, that pitch is really the platform for them to perform to their best. And yeah. as a groundsman, we are we're the we're the people that you know provide that surface and. Sort of hold that player up and and help them be the best for the for the world to see, you know, yeah, yeah. in any sport. And it's it's quite amazing, really. You think about the vital role that the groundsmen do. It's yeah, and you think ah, oh, that comes all the all the way down from the top, all the way down to the bottom, and that's just goes for everybody down to some Sunday league players, you know, or your local pay and play golf course. You, it's all down to the the groundsmen who are there putting mm, in the effort to try and mm. make that surface as, as good as it can be for the people to, to use it and, and benefit yeah. from it so yeah that's been great but it's been great talking to you tonight guys i really enjoyed that we've uh, we've gone on for a while there but we've covered a lot and it's been a great discussion well right, thank you brad it's great to have you on there and brian as always great to see you and uh, i'm jimmy the mower i've been the host for this evening uh, thank you very much and i hope to see you all on the next one <laughs>